Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a good night. I am King Piggly. This is Gaming Imperfectly, and welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for being here with me, and I hope you like what you see. Guys, the story I got for you today is 100% true. It's mind-blowing. It's creepy. If you have answers for this one, I'll give you a buffalo nickel, because I guarantee you, you're going to be just as baffled by this story as I was. Sit back, relax, prepare to have your mind blown. Portlock, Alaska. Do you know where that's at? Have you heard of this town before? Portlock, Alaska? No? No, you haven't? Well, there's a reason why you haven't, and I'll tell you why. Because it doesn't exist anymore. It's completely gone, off the face of the map. Now, this town was established back in the 1700s. It was actually founded by a man that landed there by the last name of Portlock. I think his first name was Nathan, or Nathaniel. Nathaniel Portlock was a British captain that landed there. Um, he uh, uh, didn't stay long or anything like that, but they did establish a town, and there was great fishing there. Now, this is on the Kenai Peninsula. If you don't know where that's at in Alaska, it's near Anchorage. It's the closest, largest, or the biggest city nearby. But it's super rugged terrain, guys. If you know anything about Alaska, most Alaska is rugged ter terrain. Most, Ala most Alaskans will tell you that Alaska will kill you if you aren't careful. In fact, I think sometimes Alaska... Alaska Maybe, I keep calling it Alaska. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm having some sort of stroke. Alaska is the type of place that wants to kill you, it seems like, at times. Between the weather and the animals and the giant bears and all that stuff. Guys, it's a dangerous place. And in frontier life, in the 17, 18, 19, early 1900s, Alaska was super rugged, super frontier land. I mean, it's still frontier now. Can you imagine what it was like back then? Nonetheless... Because of the great fishing and because of the location of on the Kenai Peninsula, because it was right there in a great channel, it was perfectly, it was a great port. So Portlock became a great port and a great fishing town. A cannery was established, and then certainly they found out that there's stuff called like Corlite was there, so they started um, uh, a mine, uh, mining this mineral. And so it was actually booming. It, people were coming in, families were being established. You know, mining towns have a tendency to be rough and gruff and a lot of men and not a lot of women and certainly not a lot of children. And Portlock went from that to actually starting having families and people establishing roots. Now, most people there were of Russian and Aleut descent. Uh, they had lived there for generations at this point in time where our story picks up. Guys, it had even established a post office, okay? In 1920, the federal government said this place is actually doing so well that we're going to put a post office there. Now, the government, you guys know, should know this. The U.S. federal government doesn't do anything if they don't think that it's going to last or have something. They're not going to just blow money on establishing a post office in some remote place in Alaska if they didn't think that it was going to be there for a good period of time, all right? And, and for a while it was. I mean, like I said, it was doing great. Even in the 1920s, things were going really well for the folks of Portlock, Alaska. They, uh, like I said, it was growing. The town was becoming, and, and with the government bringing in a post office, it really established that they were a real town, and the residents were very proud of that. Now, as we fast forward, some strange things started to happen as we enter into the 1930s. The first thing that started happening is that miners and men working at the cannery, some of the fisher fishermen, when they would come into port or when they were not working in the mines, would go up into the mountains that surrounded Portlock and they would hunt something called a doll sheep. I'll put a picture up. D-A-L-L. Doll. So the doll sheep, they would go up hunting these sheep and sometimes they just wouldn't come back. So people started rumblings of weirdness going on. To top that off, suddenly people started reporting seeing, right around the beginning of World War, World War II, they started reporting seeing up on a cliff over the town a pale woman with long black hair wearing a long black dress or cloak, so long that it trailed the ground behind her, and she would come up to the cliffs and just wail and scream into the night and into the uh, uh, storms, you know, when it was uh, torrential downpours and rainy torrential. They would hear her on these cliff faces, and they would look up and they see this woman wailing into the storm 
up on these cliff faces. When they run up there to see who it was, there was no one there. So that's a pretty weird thing in itself. But weirdest of all is that suddenly, not only did people start disappearing, but people started dying and being killed by something. There were rumors that they were seeing big, hairy creatures out into the woods. And, all right, from what, what they would call it was the Natanak. Now, the Natanak um, almost literally means big, hairy creature, big, hairy animal, big, hairy monster, big, hairy man. You know, pick something, but it's in that vein, all right, um, out into the woods. And so these people, remember, these are native. These people have been here for generations, guys. These are not just like some tourist from Boston, Massachusetts, who decides to go to Alaska for a summer cruise and doesn't know a bear or doesn't know their butt from their elbow. We're talking about native Alaskans who know what bear can do and know what's what. Okay, They grew up there, a lot of them, or they were born there, a lot of them. And remember, this is also the early 1900s, guys. So this isn't modern times. And these people don't just go around making up stuff about crazy stuff like this. It's just not something they did, you know, uh, on a regular basis anyway. It's certainly not a whole town. One person, maybe, yeah, like crazy Jeremy down the road there is always seeing those not to knocks. And he'll be like, yeah, oh, yeah, he sees them at least once a week. That's not what's going on. So... All these people are seeing these things and, and, and are really getting freaked out. But worse of all, not only did people start dying and being killed, but getting brutally murdered. Parts of their bodies were being mutilated, and their body parts were washing up into the lagoon in Portlock. Um, nothing that a bear could do. By all accounts, from the residents that live there, these are native Alaskans that know what a bear attack looks like, guys. In fact, it's a com not a, like a hugely common thing in Alaska, but it does happen on a frequent, uh, every year, somebody gets eaten by a bear. People know what it looks like, all right? This wasn't done by a bear by all reports. Even worse, even weirder, there was a logger um, that uh, a, a local, you know, local guy, everybody loved him. He was a really hardworking dude. He was found, his head bashed in with a piece of logging equipment like a winch for winching up uh, logs. But the thing is, is that this winch was so large that it took multiple men to establish it, to, to hook it up. No one man could move this thing around. I mean, by all accounts, yet again, these people did this for a living. These were loggers. These were fishermen. These were outdoorsmen. These were frontiersmen. And none of these people could understand how this, this uh, particular man was hit in the head with this heavy piece of logging equipment and then he was he was 10 feet away from where the logging equipment was very strange then on top of that uh even more strange right around the end of world war ii uh, about 1949 there was a local frontiersman hunter trapper who lived in portlock who went out to check his traps and he took his sled dogs with him he was out there for the night he had started a campfire, he turned his back to, and bent over to do something by the campfire, and he was attacked. Whatever it was, he says, was giant, hairy, it jumped on his back and started to beat him. Now, fortunately for him, the dogs were able to chase this creature off, whatever it is. Not to knock? I don't know. No bear did to this man what was done, though, because a bear is going to bite and has sharp claws, as we all know, guys, and it rends and tears people to pieces. This man was not laid open. He didn't have a single bite mark on him. He didn't have any shredded clothing or anything like that. However, this man managed to get his dogs hooked up, get in his sled team, go back down, get to town, and once he got to town, made it to the doctor before he actually succumbed to internal injuries because he was beaten so severely by this creature that it had ruptured parts of his body, broken his ribs, and punctured his uh, internal organs. Holy crap! This isn't a bear. All right, bear doesn't just beat you up. All right, he doesn't just bludgeon you to death. That's not what bear do. So, and finally, guys, that was kind of the last straw for the people of Portlock, Alaska, and and uh, and. Or the late uh, 1950, 1951, in mass, in mass, the residents of Port Lock left. I mean, the whole town. It's like, hey, we're done with this. In the time period between 1930 to 1950, 
No fewer than three dozen people went missing or were murdered in Portlock, Alaska. Guys, if it's a serial killer that lived there, they operated from 30s to the 50s. That's 20 years killing, whole, you know, holy crap, killing 36 people. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. But if it could have been, what do you think? Because this mystery blows my mind. The fact that this has absolutely happened, Google it, look, check it out for yourself. In fact, I encourage it. Guys, all these stories I tell, look into them yourselves. I, I absolutely promote critical thinking. I'm not saying this was a Nantanak. I'm not saying there are spirits. I will say this. To this day, the people who live there at that point in time are mostly passed away. But their children and their grandchildren remember it clearly. And they refuse to go to Portlock to this very day. To this very day, you will not get those people to set foot there because they believe that the Nantanak is in the woods. Now, I'm not saying he's not, and I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying something absolutely happened in Portlock, Alaska that is beyond explanation. It's pretty explicable how inexplicable how 13, uh, I mean, how three dozen people get murdered or disappear to where the federal government closes their post office and moves out of town. Mind-blowing. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this story. If you like this story, hit that like button for me. I know this is a kind of short one, but not all of them are going to be 30 minute long videos. And if you're new to the channel and you did like this video, I surely hope you'll subscribe. Keep coming back and hanging out with me. But whether you're new or old, I surely hope you'll also smash in that bell. Ring a ding ding. Make it ring. It helps me out, but it lets you know when I upload, which is super important if you don't want to miss out on the next dark, spooky, macabre story I might come up with. Anyway, guys, that's it for King Piggly today. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for the support. And I will see you guys in the next video.